Hello everybody, welcome to Gyrocopter Flying Club. I said in a preview film that the next one would be all about Autogyro's MTO Sport 2017, as you can see here in red. However, I thought it would be quite nice because I've got one in the hangar to have a look at the aircraft that started factory built two seat aircraft in the UK and that's Autogyro's MTO3 gyroplane. They came out in 2006. This is a 2007 version. I think it's actually uh, chassis number 31. But essentially, what you can see is that the layout is reasonably consistent. And certainly, if you look at MTO3 to the next version, which was MTO Sport, there's very, very few obvious differences. This effectively therefore is two generations before the 2017 version and if we look up at the rotor it's actually got the later rotor system 2. You can tell that because the hub bar is wasted towards the tip. The original rotor system 1 that would have been fitted to this aircraft had got consistent thickness of the hub bar from root to tip and early instructors giving enthusiastic demos sort of overloaded or put you know they were they were flying enthusiastically and that effectively cracked rotor blades such that original rotor system one is only life for 700 hours this as you can see is a 912 powered aircraft you can see that because it's got the green cam covers 914 turbo was also available in this model that came with the with the red cam covers. Uh, the prop is a factory made prop. It's fixed in its pitch. You could also uh, get a an electrically adjustable prop on later versions of this model. And as you can see, also there's the takeoff for the for the pre rotator off of the prop. As you come around to the cockpit, you'll see that. The basic layout is pretty familiar, certainly if you're an MTO sport pilot. This aircraft's got an optional vertical speed indicator you can see here. Then if we look over on the right hand side you've got um, oil pressure, oil temperature and cylinder head temperature or water temperature. And then we've got a card compass, we've got uh, engine RPM rotor RPM. We've also got just down here the rotor brake flight switch which you see it's brake or flight is the markings that determines the pneumatic system whether you're operating the rotor brake or the trim system in flight or the pre-rotator. Then down here we've got some basic uh, landing light, nav light, strobe, secondary fuel pump because as you know on a 912 the primary is uh, engine driven mechanical pump. Obviously I failed to mention the altimeter and the airspeed indicator. So throttle, wheel brake, choke uh, on the quadrant. If we look inside this one it's got an optional heated clothing uh, adapter. Then you've got a radio plug-in, regular harness and just down inside the usual document case which is familiar to every auto gyro owner. Uh, you can also store the uh, rotor tie in there. As you move in the rear compartment you can see it's reasonably spartan. This has got the optional instructor pack which includes stick, throttle and brake. And then if we come into the footwell you'll notice that the rudders they articulate slightly different from you may be used to in either Magni product or you know regular aeroplane they, they move a little bit like a like an organ so they hinge from the bottom it does mean that people who are new to these aircraft can be pressing like hell and, and not moving the rudder at all which is amusing initially back to the fuel tanks in the rear they're effectively just a couple of uh, plastic containers 35 litres a side with a, a screw top and some markings to, to give you an idea of fuel contents nav and strobes on the side and then as you move to the rear you can see that the tailplane now 
tailplane, if we look across to the 2017 version, although we've got an element of sort of perspective, i.e. that the MTO3 is nearer, you'll, you'll probably recognize even from this angle that the MTO3 tailplane is significantly bigger than the newer 2017 Sport. And what that really means practically is that when you're doing vertical descents, you do need a lot more rudder input to, to maintain your control than you would have done in either MTO3 or the following MTO Sport. If we're in the market for an MTO3, bearing in mind now there's they're reasonably commonplace on the used market, they're reasonably bulletproof by now and all of the snags have kind of been either ironed out or you know the previous owner has dealt with them. And as you just open the um, the little screw to, to pull the seat forward, uh, I just want to show you back here because one thing that you want to be aware of is you see the seat bracket, that hinge, that can that can crack out at this weld here. So do do be aware of that. And then whilst we're behind this seat, the other thing to notice is this aircraft you can see it's got some triangulation bars uh, and a fillet has been added at the bottom of the mass that's because originally the there was some cracking between the mast and the mainframe just here so they've added that fillet the triangulation bars can also if you add in conjunction with an undercarriage bow increase maximum takeoff weight from 450 to 500 another snag that can occur is just the weld here at the top that's basically uh, a, a bracket or a mounting for the top of the pre-rotator bear and that can crack so do be aware of that and also you know as I say they're reasonably bulletproof I mean this one's done about 1500 hours and is still going strong bear in mind that originally a lot of these were bought as instructor aircraft and when they were in 450 kilo guys often flown overweight in in truth and that caused quite a lot of the snags to become apparent sooner the other thing to mention is uh airspeed indicator you can see is topped out at 100 miles per hour and in truth they're more comfortable around 70 80 up at 100 near vne there they really are maxed out and the vibration levels are pretty horrendous to be honest just back here i just wanted to show you one other thing one final thing which is the oil cooler pipes you can see this one's got the optional or upgraded braided hose but the original ones were rubber with swage ends and they were awful they leaked terribly also to note while we're looking at the cooler if you fly these in cold climates or in basically europe in the winter you'll need to blank the cooler because the motor runs quite cold actually and the pressure gauge is is not the most stable value wise they represent good value because you can get these I wouldn't really be paying more than early 30,000 for a very low hours one but a good value solid aircraft this is where it all began autogyro mto3